Chemistry of Entertainment by Hannah, Emmanuel, Andrea, and Brandon. What is entertainment chemistry? Entertainment chemistry is the use of chemistry to amuse or please other people. It is most often used in movies, TV shows, or plays, which is what we will mostly cover throughout this presentation, and in toys and such for children. A basic overview of the chemistry in movies includes makeup, stage props, stunting devices, CDs, fireworks, glow-in-the-dark, and explosions. A chemical equation that we will do in our presentation will be how to make Play-Doh and that falls under the amusement for children. Makeup. The use of makeup in movies and plays was innovational. It allowed us to change the looks of a person for a couple of hours or so and then just wipe it away so they could go back to normal. The most simple type of makeup is face paint. It is made with four ingredients, white shortening, cornstarch, white flour, and glycerin, which is a simple polio or sugar alcohol compound. It is colorless, odorless liquid that is used in many pharmaceutical formulations. The more complex types include latex, silicon, polyfoam, and sometimes even clay. Stage props. Most or all stage props are made entirely out of polymers. In fact, almost anything plastic that you may use is made from polymers. A polymer is a large molecule constructed of many smaller particles. A good example of a prop made out of polymers are the bushes inside of Edward Scissorhands' garden. They are made entirely out of plastic. The leaves are made with polyethylene, which is a type of polymer, in order to make the leaves look shiny. Another good example would be the fake foods used in movies. Scientists nowadays use high quality plastics to make food that look really realistic. Some types of fake foods can even be chopped and cooked to make it seem as if the chef is cooking real food. Stunting devices. To make stunt doubles more safe, scientists have developed a material called Kevlar, which is a synthetic fiber of really high strength. It is used to make rubber for tires and bulletproof vests. Kevlar is fireproof and won't dissolve till it reaches 500 degrees Celsius. When Kevlar is submerged beneath water, it is 20 times stronger than steel. Most stunt doubles use Kevlar in their helmets and bulletproof vests. The next time you go for a bike ride, thank Kevlar for your safety. CDs and DVDs when we first started this project, we didn't think that there was much to CDs and DVDs, but there actually is. CDs and DVDs were invented by Compon and Kramer, whose original idea was to have two pieces of glass separated by a sheet of aluminum. A compact disc works like this. There are many bumps along the sheet of aluminum. The CD or DVD player uses a laser to detect and read these bumps, and based on how they are put together, the CD or DVD player will make a sound or show an image. Now we use plastic instead of glass so that the compact discs are less prone to breaking. Fireworks Fireworks are not only used in movies but in real life too. They were invented by the Chinese in the 1200s because they figured out that if you put sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal in a small space and you lit them on fire they would explode. The basic parts of fireworks include regulators, binders, reducing agents, coloring agents, and oxidizers. Oxidizers produce the oxygen to burn the solution. The reducing agents have to burn all the oxygen. Binders keep all the materials together. And coloring agents produce the color in the fireworks. This is how the different colors are made. Um, green is made from barium. Silver is made from calcium aluminum. Red is made from lithium, calcium, scr or scronium. Yellow is made from sodium lithium. The glitter effects come from antimony, and the smoke clouds come from zinc. Glow in the dark. Glow in the dark is made mostly out of phosphor, which is a substance that produces visible light after being close to a light source. You can also find phosphor in things like TV screens or computer monitors. 
A glow-in-the-dark stick contains two chemicals, sensitized and fluorophore. The mixture inside the tube is diphenol, oxalate, and a different color dye depending on the desired color. That then mixes with hydroperoxide, which yields two molecules of pyroxia acid ester. It then decomposes into carbon dioxide, releasing the energy exiting the dye to produce the glow that you all know as glow in the dark. Explosions. Explosions are caused by the violent release of energy. Most explosions are photoshopped and edited into films nowadays. But before they had that technology, movie makers were forced to make synthetic explosions. To make a synthetic bomb, most people use an oxidizer, some fuel, and something to trigger the explosion, like gunpowder or TNT. To show the aftermath of a bomb, they might use movie smoke or th synthetic fire, which is made by placing a plastic bottle with naphthalene in it over heat. When the bottle is heated, the bottle will melt and the naphthalene will catch immediate fire. For our group's de demonstration, we decided to make Play-Doh, which is a common entertainment source for children. So, we are going to start by putting one cup of water into a saucepan. Then I'm going to turn on the heat. And keep it on a fairly high heat. Um, next, I'm going to add in my pre-measured tablespoon of cream of tartar. Make sure it all gets in there. Um, next, I'm going to add in this salt. It's a half a cup of salt, which seems like a lot, but it's there so that the Play-Doh won't expire. Um, next, I'm going to put a tablespoon of oil. It doesn't really matter what type of oil you put in there. It just needs to be some sort of thick substance. I'm going to go ahead, once I start stripping, put that in there. And then, the last thing I'm going to put in is food coloring. And it doesn't really matter what color you put in, but the more, and it doesn't matter how many drops you put in, but the more drops you put in, the more thick the color will get. I'm using blue, and I'm just going to put four drops in. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to take this spatula rubber thing and mix it all up. I was trying to get all the dots to separate because I accidentally put them in the oil. It's taking a little bit longer for them to separate. So once all of your materials have been combined, you're going to add a cup of flour in there. And what the flour is going to do is it's going to react with the cream of tartar and make the substance more thick. And so I'm going to videotape it with this to show how quick the reaction starts. No, no. Okay. Ready? So now the flour is just sitting at the top, but I'm just mixing it in, trying to get it to mix in. And the reaction happens pretty fast once the cream of tartar gets in with the flour. It's starting to condense now. And I turn off the heat. Now I'm just mixing it all, trying to separate the flour and add it in. And now it's not complete completely together. There's still some liquid in there, but it's definitely thicker than um, it was before. Not It's less like water and more like a aqueous solution or something. Then you just continue to mix it in. 
and I have actually a finished product. You continue to mix it in till it looks something like this. Or, or in whatever color that you chose. Um, thanks for watching. For our next demonstration, I am going to be showing you how to make popcorn. And while the popcorn is making, I will tell you about the chemistry behind it. And obviously, you can't have movies without having popcorn. So I have this popcorn thing, and so I don't need to use a microwave. So what I start with is I put in three fourths cup of popcorn kernels. I'm just gonna rub that off. Put that in there. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it looks like a lot. And then to give the popcorn kernels a little flavor, I add in three fourths cup of oil. And I started just sort of eating. And how this contraption works is the bottom of it heats up. And then this part, there's like a little spinny thing at the bottom. And it twirls around and it makes sure that all the kernels move so that they all get popped. So, I am going to plug it in. Which turns on, see the spinner thing is going. And then put this cap on there. And you'll see it start to pop soon. Now, how popcorn works is, um, the, each popcorn kernel is made up of, um, starch and water, basically. And when the starch, um, or when it starts to heat up, the water expands as you know when it turns to gas and when it gets to about um i think 350 degrees celsius what is it 180 degrees celsius that's off um 180 degrees celsius and 930 kpa pressure the outside shell of the popcorn kernel can't take the pressure any longer and it pops, and that's how you get popcorn. And then obviously you soak up the um, the seeds from the water. And I see some of them, the popcorn kernels, are turning brown, so that means that they're cooking. They should start to pop soon. I'm going to put this cap on there just to contain the hot air. Hopefully we'll get to see some of the popcorn kernels start to burst. I was reading an interesting article, I didn't know how long this would take, I was reading an interesting article about the chemistry of popcorn, the popability, it, there, I don't know what it's doing right now, but scientists said that they may have found a way to identify popcorn's pop, popability, so that um, you won't have to, um, oh look there, it's going, so that you won't have to have unpopped seeds anymore. I don't know if you can tell, but the bowl is really steaming up, like the oil and the water inside of the popcorn kernels are evaporating. And I can, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can really hear the um, steam or the bubbling of the oil in there. So it's fairly hot in there right now. And once the kernels start to pop, I'll take this top part off so that the steam can be released. I'm getting fairly close, it should be on there. Get in there. Actually, I'm going to hold this part down to make sure that it doesn't help. It's about to pop. I can feel it. Come on. All right, I'm going to try and read more into this before popcorn starts popping. Ooh. 
This article says that unpopped kernels are also called old maids, which is interesting, I guess. It smells good. Oh, they're actually popping. I don't know if you can see it, really. Oh, you can probably see them splattering now. You see everywhere. Yeah, they're going crazy now. Uh, yeah, you can probably see it there more now that they're not. The bowl will eventually get filled up like right here. Our fresh bowl of popcorn and put a little salt on it to give it a little more flavor. And that's how you make popcorn. Link to Google Docs page. This is our link to the Google Docs page. It goes and explains in more depth about what we basically just explained to you in the previous slides. Hope you enjoy. Work cited page. Our first site was from Chemistry of Entertainment. Our second site was Starch Chemistry. Our third site was chemi Chemistry 2011. Our third site was a podcast.